one in all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to find out who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, maybe your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters, Jin Kazama, the Lightning of Fate, and Raven, the Mistress of Magic. Which of fiction's supernatural sluggers will claim victory in the super special episode 50? Let's find out. This is Universes. Now I've talked about Jin a ton in my time as a versus debater, so regulars may get annoyed hearing the story yet again, but for new viewers, here we go. Jin Kazama is the son of Jun Kazama and Kazuya Mishima. He grew up only knowing his mother though, training with her in Kazuma style martial arts until she mysteriously went missing one day after her and Jin were attacked by Ogre. After this incident, Jin went to train in Mishima style karate with his grandfather Heihachi so that he could one day get his revenge on Ogre. And this is where Jin's father comes into play. You see, when Jin finally came face to face with Ogre, he was filled with so much anger that Heihachi was able to see traces of the Devil Gene within him. The Devil Gene is a supernatural genetic trait that Jin got from his father Kazuya, who had received it from his mother Kazumi. Heihachi despised the Devil Gene as it had taken everything away from him, so he attempted to murder Jin in order to stop it. Little did he know that he only made it worse. Now Jin must figure out how to get it under control. It does grant him quite a large arsenal though. I mean, even without it, Jin still has tons of stuff. He knows three different types of martial arts, the two mentioned in his bio along with traditional karate. Jin's aura and key holds lightning-like properties, allowing for an electrifying impact to every hit. He can even charge up this key for extra damage. When the powers of the Devil Gene come into play though, the list gets a lot longer. He grows two extremely large black angel wings, allowing for incredibly fast flight. He can fire laser beams from the jewel on his forehead that can seem to cut through any material, and he can absorb energy. The Devil Gene can absorb dark energies like other Devil Gene users' abilities or evil spirits, but also light energy as Kazuya's Devil Gene was able to overpower Angel. This should apply to Jin as well considering it's a genetic trait. They both have also shown telekinetic abilities, though unlike Kazuya it seems like Jin needs his hands to perform his. The Devil Gene has a healing factor too. After getting nearly beaten to death, it healed up Kazuya enough to battle Shinakuma pretty evenly, and it has healed Jin multiple times from bullet wounds before he had even unlocked his devil form. Jin can also use several devil gene abilities in his base form, like the lasers I mentioned earlier. He can also control fire with his feet or freeze opponents with his punches. Then finally, Jin can produce several powerful barriers to protect himself from both melee and projectile attacks. He's got a lot to work with. So let's see what he's done. Now the verse of Tekken gets pretty insane. In terms of speed, the Devil Gene's lasers can reach speeds of 40 times faster than light. This was discovered by measuring the orbit points of the satellite here between the frames of when the laser was fired. By comparing the satellite's size relative to Earth's, you can also discover the distance. No head cannon, no slowing down footage, 40 times the speed of light is the result. This should apply to movement speed as well, considering Heihachi was able to outrun one of these. It gets even crazier when we get into strength though. You know those Jack Robots, the fodder characters pretty much anyone in Tekken can beat? Well, even one of the earliest versions tanked a city level blast that was able to destroy an island level area. It gets better. The Jack 6 model specifically was able to shatter a gigantic meteor that came out to 21 petatons of TNT, multi-continental levels of power. And it's supported pretty well in canon by flashbacks of this installment in canon material. And other absurd canon feats like fodder kangaroos punching each other light years away to separate constellations in a matter of seconds. And Jin is able to scale to all of this considering Heihachi is able to one-shot an army of these jack robots. And Jin can beat Heihachi in his base form. Jin more than likely even reaches planet levels of power through defeating Azazel, who is consistently labeled as a planetary threat. The Child of Destiny is setting the bar pretty high for our next fighter. Honestly, Raven's story isn't too different from Jin's when you really think about it. Just like Jin, Raven was the spawn of a good human mother, unfortunately coming across a horrible demon, Trigon, and well, stuff happened. She instantly regretted it and hid away in a parallel world called Azeroth to have Raven. While there, Raven was trained in how to use her abilities, and this is where the big difference comes in to split the road between Raven and Jin. You see, Jin had no idea what was within him until it happened, while Raven was told everything. 
I don't think it's up to me to say if that was for better or for worse, but she was filled with so much curiosity that she just had to get some closure with dear old dad. Needless to say, it didn't go very well, and Raven fled to Jump City on our own planet Earth. It was there that she would meet her greatest allies and join them, forming the Teen Titans. With her new life on Earth and friends by her side, Raven was able to assist in defending the planet as she prepared her powers for Trigon's eventual return. Speaking of powers though, Raven is filled to the brim with all kinds of dark abilities, and thanks to her iconic incantation Azareth Metrion Zinthos, she can focus and strengthen them all to higher levels. I mean, she's already skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but why would she use that when she can control shadows with her soul self? Raven is able to manipulate and shapeshift shadows to attack her foes, and even combines it with telekinesis for a large variety of moves. According to Raven, she has to put a little of herself into whatever she's controlling with her telekinesis, which is probably why she pretty much only uses it on objects rather than humans, even though she's more than capable of doing so. Raven can move pieces of rubble, rocks, large trees, or even entire buildings. She'll use anything she can find and launch it at her foes. With her telekinesis, she can also create barriers to protect herself or even phase through walls and floors. Raven also has the ability to heal herself and others. This is part of her empathy abilities, which she can use to sense and read the mental state of others. She can even enter the subconscious of others, forming a close mental bond with them. Speaking of empathy though, Raven has many more emotion-based powers. This includes several different emotion-based clones with different personality traits and strengths. When merging them and finding harmony within herself, Raven was able to become White Raven. This is her strongest form with several light-based abilities and properties that can exercise demons. On her own though, Raven has been able to battle many powerful villains that invade Jump City. She's been able to outsmart Mumbo and his magical tricks multiple times, and has been able to take on Terra. In fact, she even helped Terra hold up the Titan Tower as well as the island it rested on. When it comes to Raven's fellow Titans though, it's pretty debatable who can scale to whom in certain areas. However, in speed she should be somewhat comparable to Starfire, who can travel across solar systems in seconds. While these are fictional solar systems, even the smaller ones in our own reality are still billions to trillions of miles in diameter, more than enough for Starfire and to a lesser extent Raven to be massively faster than light. Considering they're both able to keep up pretty well with similar opponents and can even take on Dr. Light who does in fact use light speed attacks, there's no reason Raven shouldn't scale. Next we can get into her most powerful feat of strength thanks to White Raven. With all the powers of White Raven, she was able to defeat her father Trigon and reverse the ruin he brought to the planet's surface. Not to mention Trigon was also consistently labeled as the destroyer of worlds. Huh, multi-continental feats and planet level statements. Sounds familiar. Seems legit though, can't have double standards getting in the way. And with Ray Ray covered, it's time to take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Don't make me send you to another dimension. Hey guys, this is Sun Almighty here, bringing you a new universe's prediction. This one is Jin vs. Raven. Leopold's finally using one of his favorite characters, Jin, in this show. He's fighting Raven. And keep in mind that about Raven, we're only using the 2003 Teen Titans version, only to make the fight as fair as possible. Because DC Comics Raven destroys Jin, no question. And. I'm not sure about Teen Titans Go, maybe Jim would destroy her on that one, but let's get down to business. What Jin can do is that he can create, he, well, he created a wasteland with his devil wings and he destroyed a force. His speed, he can keep up with Heiachi, who can not only dodge bullets, but also catch from his teeth. He can also scale a Bob, who can run past bullets, and he even fought Haram. He can also survive bullet wounds. As for Raven, both have telekinesis, and both can kill a Trigon and Azazel, because they beat them. That's right, they beat them. They even have their most strongest forms, like Devil Jin, who can fly through, like a little wave, fly to space in a matter of seconds, and dodge bad laser from a satellite, giving him massive, well, giving him faster than light reaction speed. Raven can also fly physically, and according to the MLG Avocado, he said she can all, in her, in her best form, surpasses Starfire, who crossed the solar system, who can cross the solar system, making her, making Raven very, very fast. 
I honestly prefer and do think that Raven is faster than Jin. I mean, I have a funny feeling Leopold Raven might dunk this up in... might dunk this up, but what's my prediction? I'll get to that later. Like I said, they both beat Trigon, and they both beat Azazel, making them, and since they're both at planet level, that means that both Raven and Jin are planet level. They're both, they can both be, they're both, their forms, their best forms can be faster than light, or massively, I'm sorry, I still don't know much about what this is so, and since they scale to Trigon and Azazel, that means they should also be quite durable. I mean, Jin can heal himself, but Raven can, all, can also heal herself too. And all the Titans as well. Plus, she can she can also guard Artis off from Jin's attacks. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, that Raven's telekinetic powers would far surpass Jin's. Azareth, Metreon, Xenthos. So yeah. I think that this is very, 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 very close. And as for who is the winner going to be, well, I hate to say it, but it's highly likely that the winner is going to be Raven, and uh, here's why, because, like I said, sure, she helped Terra lift the rest of that Titan's Tower up. And I'm talking about base form Jin, base form Raven. Base form Raven can be stronger than Jin, I think. But when, when it comes to Devil Jin versus versus Raven at her best form, I think Raven would far surpass Jin than Jin in Ken on Raven. Sure, Jin can be fast, but Raven is a lot faster. They may be strong and durable in their own rights. But I think that Raven's su far superior speed, superior telekinesis, and other protective moves, and and su and healing, not to herself, but all we retains as well, will give her the edge in this episode of Universes. The fifth episode, episode of Universes. Raven vs. Jin. Sorry, Jin, but you're not going to win this one. Raven is our winner. Shout out to Leopold of Brave. Shout out to MLG Avocado. Shout out to, shout out to Corn O'Keefe. Combo Breaker, and everyone who watches Universes and the upcoming show Hyperverse Collision. The Sun of the Mighty out. And the results are in. The winner is. Raven! That's right. I let it happen. It was difficult, but I finally managed to let my favorite fictional character of all time take an L. I'm sorry, my boy. I'm sorry. We'll start with stats first. I'll save the interesting power-related stuff for later. When it comes to strength, they both have multi-continental feats and scaling, along with planet-level statements, showing that Raven is more than capable of fighting evenly against Jin. Besides, not to doubt Jin's statements or anything, but Ravens are more believable anyways considering visual planet-level feats have happened in reverse before, even though she can't exactly scale to them. Then of course there's the speed feats. Jin's reaction, attack, and movement speeds can reach 40 times the speed of light, thanks to the devil beams. Meanwhile Raven can very loosely scale the Starfire who can cross solar systems in seconds. Even if Raven was over 5,000 times slower than Starfire, she'd still be at least 800 times faster than light, more than enough to blitz Jin several times over. Not even his teleportation would speed him up enough to catch her, and with Raven's added ability of being able to phase through stuff, he probably wouldn't even be able to touch her. What about Jin's telekinesis, though? If Raven's too fast, then he could just hold her in place, right? I mean, yeah, probably, but it wouldn't last very long. Raven has way more experience with telekinesis than Jin, and with enough willpower, she can use her abilities without using her hands, unlike Jin. While it's true that Jin should have many more tricks up his sleeves, exceeding Raven's number of powers with his own arsenal, the things they do have in common have Raven in the lead by a long shot. Anything Jin can do, Raven does better, even when it comes to light energies like White Raven. Now it's true that the Devil Gene doesn't have a weakness to standard good and light based attacks, like let's say the power of nothingness or the spirit bomb, and it can even absorb them like when it overpowered Angel. 
But White Raven's powers are more than generic light attacks. They have properties of exorcism, which should no doubt be able to destroy the Devil Gene. Similar to Claudio, who was stated to have the Devil Gene's weakness. So with her superior speed, stronger abilities, and a direct counter to the Devil Gene, Jin's life gets taken away. The winner is... Raven! Raven! Quit it. What's up guys, Leopold the Brave. Don't leave the video yet, I'm going to announce the next fighters. I've just got a couple things to say. The first is a super, very special thank you and shout out to Ray. The link to his channel will be in the description. He assisted heavily in researching this episode, and I could not have gotten it out without him. The second is that I'm going to be taking a break after this episode. Even though I've been against it before, I've decided to start doing seasons with universes, so consider this the official end of season one. The reason why is because I think seasonal breaks in general will help me keep more motivated on this show, and I specifically need a break right now anyways for health-related reasons. Don't worry, it's nothing serious, I just need to gain more weight and working on universes is made me lose weight. So oof. But like I said, I'm going to let you know which fighters are coming next in Season 2. I'm not going to leave you hanging, so here we go. Get ready for the next battle. 